Thank you very much, sir. I'm very happy to be here and I want to thank the organizers to give me this opportunity to visit lovely St. Petersburg. And um, so I want to say that this is a typical transport in Norway, so you see our everyday life. <laughs> well, so, and uh, also I want to say that it's a joint work with Irina Markina, who is also a professor of the University of Bergen. And uh, I will speak about uh, Lovner Kufarev evolution and uh, uh, KP Herakis. And uh, I must say that uh, Lovner equation, Lovner evolution, received much attention in the last decade uh, in relation to uh, stochastic Lovner evolution and uh, or Schramm Lovner evolution, which is a stochastic analog of classical Lovner evolution, which started uh, as long ago as uh, 1923. But uh, today I will speak a little different perspective, uh, not uh, stochastic version, but the classical version, even smooth evolution, but in relation with integrable systems. So of course uh, this is uh, congratulations to Ludwig Mitrich, but he is today in Moscow, so he doesn't see this. And this is in Norwegian, gratulerer med dagen. Okay, so I will continue. And now this is morphing between two American presidents, from Bush to Barack Obama. And uh, this is a typical shape morphing or shape evolution. So this is a computer picture, of course. And uh, one of their uh, the mathematicians who led the basis of uh, partner cognition and uh, evolution uh, shape evolution is David Marford from Brown University, so he received even uh, in 2010 medal, uh, U.S. National Medal of Science, in particular for his works, uh, basis works uh, in foundation of mathematical uh, basis of shape evolution. And now let's continue with the typical shape. So this is my favorite animal, the bunny. And uh, so by shape I mean uh, uh, the uh, simply connected, this is for simplicity, we can see the only simply connected domain bounded by smooth curves. And uh, if we see this picture, so we have another rabbit, but immediately we recognize that it is the same rabbit, but seen from a distance. And uh, here is again the same rabbit, but on a slope. And uh, we immediately recognize that it is the same rabbit. So we uh, want to uh, make them equal, so uh, avoiding this rotation, scaling, and shifts. But this is another rabbit we see. And uh, this is a, not at all a rabbit, and this is a girl, another shape. And uh, the, basi the, the basic question can, it, uh, can be addressed here is, uh, first of all, how does one compare a rabbit or cat? Uh, or girl. And uh, another one which I will address today, how we transform a rabbit to a cat, how we morph one image to another one. And in particular, so we, uh, I will just say that if one uh, use uh, classical Hausdorff distance between shapes, so it's not very good because uh, uh, it doesn't follow the morphing. So that's why so uh, uh, exactly uh, Peter Meher, David Marwart propose uh, uh, special kind of metrics, in particular wild Peterson metric can be used uh, uh, in comparing shapes. So this is another picture uh, by Jenna, so she's a visual artist from mm. Great Britain, so uh, this is another morphing from uh, rabbit to a girl. And now we start with some mathematics behind. So uh, what basically morphing means in terms of shapes? So it is a motion in the space of shapes. So space of shapes is a very complex and uh, infinite dimensional manifold. And uh, so uh, uh, Mumford, for example, uh, this picture is taken from his lecture, from David Mumford's lecture in 2002 in Beijing. 
And uh, again, so we ask how do we tune shapes for gating shift, rotation and scaling. And uh, basically comparing shapes, uh, one can start with some canonical shape. In this case, my canonical shape will be the unit disk. So here is the unit disk at time zero. And then one can study deterministic, what I'm, uh, 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 what I'm speaking today, and, uh, or stochastic. And uh, we have some target shape here. Well, this is not exactly the rabbit, but something. And uh, so this is a, a homotopy from the unit disk, or from the unit circle, onto this curve, uh, sim uh, which bounds simply connected domain. <coughs> and uh, one of the helping uh, tool is uh, so-called uh, conformal welding. So if I have uh, my domain, so I have my canonical domain, which is the unit disk uh, here, and uh, so of course I can construct conformal map from one simply connected domain to the other one, so from the unit disk onto this blue domain, and uh, so the uh, function f will stand for the conformal map of the unit disk onto the domain, and function g of course exists uh, my Riemann mapping theorem that uh, maps the exterior part of the unit disk onto the exterior part of the simply connected domain. But here, of course, uh, I have no normalization, so this is just a <coughs> general conformal map, and I want to start to normalize it, which exactly corresponds if, uh, to uh, rotation, so uh, Sca uh, scaling and uh, shifts. So I want to normalize but uh, f a factor out the uh, linear maps. So I will start with coefficient one on the uh, conformal map, which, we had, uh, which maps the interior of the unit disk onto interior of the domain. But of course, once I normalize this map, so I, can normal I cannot normalize the exterior map, and uh, I will leave it like this. Of course, uh, once I have interior map, the exterior map is defined, and uh, let me uh, denote by F node the class of all conformal embeddings of the unit disk to the complex plane, uh, normalized uh, like this, and uh, such that, so I again say that uh, today I consider only C infinity smooth on the boundary maps, so S1 will stand for the unit circle, and uh, so this map uh, is smooth up to the boundary and analytic inside the domain. And of course, since it is uh, uh, smooth on the domain, I can continue it uh, onto the boundary. And uh, now I uh, construct exactly welding. So uh, if I start with a point on the boundary and map it, but exterior first map to the map on the boundary of the domain. And then I return back onto the unit circle by inverse map uh, to F. And uh, what I get as a result is an element uh, from uh, this homogeneous space. So uh, the first uh, uh, part of this uh, quotient is a group of diffeomorphisms of the unit circle and I factor out rotations. And uh, elements from these manifolds are called uh, fingerprints, so at least Mumford calls uh, it like this, and uh, the uh, nice thing is that uh, uh, if I complexify this manifold, of course uh, naturally it is not complex, uh, but I can complexify it, then the <coughs> holomorphic part of this complexification is naturally uh, coincides with uh, uh, natural uh, the complex structure on the space of conformal embeddings of the unit disk. So there is a, a, a biholomorphic mapping between these two manifolds. And uh, so this manifold was ex uh, extensively studied in the uh, mid of 80s by uh, Kirillov and Yuryev and uh, many other people from this group. And uh, so uh, that's why so sometimes this uh, homogeneous manifold uh, is called Kirillov manifold, but uh, Really, it uh, coincides with so-called smooth uh, approximation of Teichmuller curve. So, uh, the fiber space over Teichmuller space. <coughs> well, and uh, what do you mean? It's zero. Uh, excuse me. It's zero, so what is Universal Teichmuller space. Sorry. 
universal technology space. And uh, this is a picture uh, all taken from the Sharon and Mumford uh, from 2006. So this is exactly uh, the initial image. And uh, this is fingerprint. And uh, this is a restoration of uh, this image by fingerprint. So there is uh, actually the algorithm how to do this uh, even uh, in computer. Well, and now let us turn to uh, Leovner and Kufarev. So, Karel Leovner uh, and uh, Pavel Parfenovich Kufarev. So, these two persons will be mentioned today many times. And uh, what, uh, so first, of course, uh, the initial uh, equation was proposed by Leovner and then uh, in general form uh, generalized in 40s uh, by Kufarev. And, uh, so I mean that any univalent function, any conformal embedding of the unit disk into the complex plane, normalized like this. So normally it is called the class uh, of univalent maps S because uh, before 60s it was called Schlicht functions by mathematicians. And uh, any such function can be represented as this limit. is a homotopic limit and uh, the function f of z and t, so it starts with the same normalization and satisfies this uh, ordinary differential equation uh, where uh, the function p is called sometimes driving term or control function. Uh, it is a holomorphic regular map in the unit disk uh, starting with uh, this one and of course uh, this normalization follows from the normalization of the univalent function itself and uh, we suppose that the real part of this uh, holomorphic function uh, is positive uh, in the unit disk. And uh, we uh, propose uh, initial condition problem. So this is uh, initial condition. So we start as it was shown before from the unit disk. That's why so the initial uh, function is just the identical map. And uh, so this function f of zt performs exactly homotopy that I uh, showed uh, before. So this is a, a homotopy from the unit disk onto this domain and uh, actually I am mostly interested in uh, the behavior of the boundary. So for me uh, everything I need is concentrated on the unit circle and on the domain boundary here. Well and uh, uh, I must say that uh, uh, this uh, evolution is a typical control problem because I have driving term which tunes the evolution from the given canonical simple uh, contour which is a unit circle in our case to my target contour and uh, uh, it is uh, quite different you know, ideologically from uh, another popular homotopy uh, uh, in uh, the space of shapes provided by so-called Laplacian growth because uh, Laplacian growth is a typical field problem, field theory problem when uh, <coughs> given the initial domain so the evolution is determined but here we tune it so this is typical control problem instead. But it's interesting that being a control problem is also related to integrability. Now uh, uh, I want to make a Hamiltonian formulation to uh, this uh, uh, homotopy and uh, that's why so I need some structures on the uh, space of shapes uh, or space of univalent maps in this case and uh, so I uh, introduce a Hilbert structure L2 uh, on the cotangent uh, spaces uh, uh, well so here is cotangent space at point F so current point uh, and uh, so uh, I will consider the space of uh, C infinity smooth functions with uh, uh, L2 norm. And now I define observables on this uh, cotangent bundle uh, and observables uh, will be given by this integral. So R is a smooth function on uh, all variables and uh, this is integration over the unit circle uh, and uh, this I put here iz in the denominator just to uh, showing that uh, we integrate over the circle so uh, it's a d theta if I use the angular measure instead. 
And uh, so on the unit circle, this function psi of zt is from my space, which I denote h, is not uh, exactly Hilbert space, but is a uh, dense subset of L2. Uh, and uh, I, uh, well, equalize it uh, to the uh, cotangent space uh, to the manifold F0 at point F. And uh, here is a, a Fourier expansion of this function on the unit circle. So Z lives on the unit circle. And uh, here is a, uh, well, so the uh, ex exponent here is given in this form just for, conven uh, for convenience in the future. So this is psi, this is a function psi, and uh, f is uh, from f naught, and t is the current time, which comes from the evolution. And uh, also, I will consider a special observable, which in control theory is called pseudo Hamiltonian. So, uh, pseudo, because here I have a control function p. So, I uh, will not solve any extremal problem here, which is typical for control. And uh, normally in control theory, I, if I have pseudo Hamiltonian, then I solve uh, the uh, control problem, so the, uh, find extremal. Uh, control and then inserting in pseudo Hamiltonian extremal control, I get the normal Hamiltonian. And here again, so I just remind that driving function uh, p, uh, well, so these functions with uh, positive real parts uh, normally in complex analysis are called uh, Karateadori class. So it is regular in normalized in the unit disk and uh, also, I suppose that it is smooth on the unit circle, and this I need uh, in order to guarantee that my uh, evolution is always smooth on the boundary. Well, and uh, another condition which is not written here, it must be summable on the whole axis in order to uh, the evolution exists uh, infinite time. And uh, then uh, we introduce uh, Poisson structure of the space of observables. So here, I have, if I have two observables, so the Poisson uh, uh, bracket is given by this integral, where this uh, uh, delta means uh, the variation of derivatives. Or in coordinates, it's, uh, this Poisson structure is constructed in coordinates, such that uh, this, uh, uh, this is a uh, nice uh, relations uh, in coordinates. And uh, of course, uh, these coordinates C, uh, these are coefficients of the function F, and Psi M are coefficients of the function Psi. And uh, this is a comfortable notation for here, and uh, comfortable fine coordinates in the space of uh, F0, uh, and uh, local coordinates in space F0, and uh, on the cotangent bundle. So, uh, so we here, uh, this delta is Kronecker, and uh, so, uh, and also, uh, we can suppose that, uh, so C, uh, N here for C is always positive because we have only Taylor expansion of the function. But really, so I can also uh, put here negative, assuming that all of negative coefficients are zeros. So just for convenience. Well, so we have uh, infinite dimensional Hamiltonian system, which can be written in this standard form, when a, where h is uh, my pseudo Hamiltonian, uh, and as I say, so all negative coefficients and zero coefficients uh, for the holomorphic map are zeros. So, uh, but psi, of course, the, we have Fourier expansion, so all of them present. <coughs> what can I do else? Uh, how to relate what I uh, uh, have done uh, with uh, the original Leonard Kuflev equation? So I can, of course, multiply all these coefficients, excuse me, all these coefficients uh, by powers of z, all these coefficients so by powers of z, and summing up uh, the series, I get exactly lovner kufriev equation here. So the lovner kufriev equation itself becomes now the first part in the Hamiltonian system. And uh, so po uh, position coordinates. And uh, for momenta, I have what I have. So just uh, the next part is given in this form. Uh, and uh, this is exactly uh, the Poisson. So uh, uh, it, it can be written with the uh, help of Poisson structure. So we have now infinite dimensional Hamiltonian system. 
And now uh, I am interested, of course, in conserved quantities in this Hamiltonian system. And I set up the function L, uh, which is uh, sum of uh, uh, this coefficients L, which I will use further. So it's a function also from C infinity. And uh, actually, it is a product of the derivative of my conformal map multiplied by psi bar. So it's a very simple function. But apparently, it becomes very important because uh, 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 so if I consider so because uh, of this theorem so actually this generating function uh, is uh, conserved uh, along the trajectories of Hamiltonian system and of course coefficients of this uh, uh, function also conserved and uh, if uh, somebody makes analogy with uh, Laplace and growth those who are familiar with Laplace and growth in a certain sense it is analog of Schwarz function in Laplace and growth not exactly but in some sense uh, because uh, uh, Schwarz function actually gives uh, also um, conserved quantities of Laplace and growth. And uh, for example, uh, if I consider the negative part uh, of this uh, expansion, so I have uh, this uh, form of coefficients, uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, this negative part will be essential in, in some parts. So uh, as, as I say, so this generating function and its coefficients are conserved quantities of the Hamiltonian system. And uh, then, of course, uh, after uh, this discovery, so it was uh, natural to look for a relation to uh, integrable systems. Uh, let me just remind uh, that uh, algebraic structure, which uh, stands behind uh, this Hamiltonian system is given by Witt algebra. So uh, uh, I will not uh, actually consider uh, Virasov algebra as central extension, but only Witt part because here no stochasticity, no quantum effects. That's why so I don't need uh, really uh, their uh, central extension. But nevertheless, so I just mentioned that uh, if I uh, consider a representation of uh, Witt algebra or uh, uh, of the vector fields, so the space of vector fields, of uh, uh, smooth vector fields, fields on the unit circle. So uh, let's consider the uh, group of diffeomorphism orientation preserving diffeomorphisms uh, over the unit circle. So it's a Lee uh, <coughs> group. And uh, by uh, a vector S1, I denote uh, uh, vector uh, Lie algebra of smooth vector fields on S1 and uh, this uh, algebra can be identified uh, with the Lie algebra to this Lie group and uh, so the Lie bracket is given standardly for the smooth vector fields and if I represent this bracket in a complex uh, Fourier basis then I have uh, immediately V relation for this uh, basis fields uh, uh, so this uh, is called Witt relation, and uh, this is the realization of uh, 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 Lie algebra of, uh, of uh, Witt algebra on the uh, smooth vector fields. And uh, Verasol algebra is given as a central extension uh, to Witt algebra. So here is uh, like a general form of gilfand fuchs co cycle, which appeared in 1968 in the famous short paper by Gilfand and Fuchs. And uh, this uh, C is a central charge, so this is Verasoro uh, relation. Well, uh, and now I uh, just want to uh, remind that uh, this is a nice uh, correspondence between the space of analytic functions and uh, the tangent bundles over these spaces. and. Uh, uh, my object that I introduced there. So if I denote by F uh, the, uh, all m uh, the manifold of all smooth univalent functions non-normalized in the unit disk, then if uh, I fix the conformal radius of the image domain 1, then I get uh, the projective space F1 here. And uh, so this means that the coefficient A node is uh, uh, of absolute value 1. And then if I normalize simply by 1, then I get uh, the space F0, which I am uh, working with. And uh, there is a nice relation between the Verasoro group and uh, the space F, which is holomorphic. Uh, there is a biholomorphic map between these spaces. 
then if I consider the group of uh, orientation preserving diffeomorphism uh, and uh, its uh, uh, holomorphic part or tangent space, uh, then so I have a Cauchy Riemann uh, relation between F1 and uh, this group and uh, the space in question, so the uh, smooth Teichmuller curve here, or Kirillov spaces uh, with a biholomorphic relation with uh, F0. So here is relation with analytic functions. <coughs> and uh, uh, my uh, negative coefficients that I uh, uh, showed before, so they are uh, they play uh, a role of uh, uh, Verasoro generators actually. But uh, first, uh, let me start just with uh, so this is uh, just remind the definition of Verasoro uh, algebra. And if I consider f from the uh, from the space f node, then uh, operators f uh, L G uh, act for positive coefficients. Uh, over these uh, functions as uh, just uh, a derivative of functions multiplied by some power of z. Or in a fine coordinates, I get so-called Kirillov operators here. And uh, if I go from tangent space to contangent space, I have exactly the coefficients that appeared earlier here in my generating function. So this is a very nice relation. And it will be actually the engine which will help me to construct uh, hierarchies then. So in cotangent form is exactly these operators become my negative part of generating function. Well, and uh, now let me turn to uh, infinite dimensional Grassmannian. So this is a two famous paper that uh, get the start to uh, the investigations in the infinite dimension Grassmannian and I will follow Siegel Wilson uh, actually approach which is more analytic and more related to what we need. So just uh, want to remind what is uh, Grassmannian so if I have a H as a separate Hilbert space I introduce some polarization in this Hilbert space and the points of Grassmannian are closed linear subspaces of uh, uh, this H uh, which are commensurable uh, with uh, H plus. So what does it mean commensurable? That there exists orthogonal projection from V subspace of H to the positive part of my polarization and it is Fred Holm operator. <coughs> and uh, the uh, co co counterpart of this is a negative projection to v, uh, from V to H minus and uh, uh, this is a hilbert schmidt operator and just to remind that Fred Holm means that kernel and co-kernel are finite dimensional of pi plus and uh, the Hilbert-Schmidt means that the Hilbert-Schmidt norm, uh, uh, Hilbert norm is finite uh, for any orthonormal basis in V. So this is a standard definition and uh, so more convenient is another equivalent uh, definition so uh, V belongs to Grassmannian if and only if there exists a bounded linear operator omega from H plus to H such that the V is exactly the image of H plus under this operator and the superposition with the my projections are correspondingly Fred Holm and Hilbert Schmidt. And uh, this uh, allows uh, to model uh, this manifold Grassmannian over the space of Hilbert Schmidt operators which is convenient to denote L2 with analogy to the usual space L2 of functions. So here is of course of operators. Well, and uh, so we need also the notion of neighborhoods in Grassmannian uh, to give a topological um, <coughs> uh, topology to this space. And uh, uh, so this is a definition. So uh, V is a point of Grassmannian. And this is UV is neighborhood of this V. And this uh, UV consists of points of Grassmannian VT such that T is Hilbert Schmidt operator from V to its orthogonal complement. And uh, so this is a graph. And so the space of graphs actually is uh, exactly the neighborhood of Grassmannian. So V here is just, uh, <laughs> of course, nothing to do with reality, just uh, uh, for a visualization of graphs. So we have V, we have orthogonal complement, and we have graph. 
so this is identity operator. Well, so uh, I need uh, very specific uh, neighborhoods, uh, these neighborhoods of H plus. So this uh, is a neighborhood of H plus, also given to visualize a little <coughs> this neighborhood. Well, and uh, so uh, this uh, topology gets the structure of smooth Hilbert manifold modeled over the space of Hilbert-Schmidt operators from H plus to H minus. So this is the basis, uh, basics of uh, definition of Grassmannian. And uh, in our case, so by Hilbert space, I will take L2 space uh, uh, of uh, functions over the unit circle uh, with a complex basis Z to the power K. And uh, polarization is given by positive powers of Z. Uh, but here, of course, span means the span inside this space. So preserving L2. <coughs> uh, e also, and also we uh, define the index systems. So index system uh, is the side that there, so it's an infinite uh, sequence which uh, side that uh, uh, if I remove uh, positive integers from this sequence or add uh, some uh, negative integers to the sequence, both uh, these sets are finite. And then uh, I also need uh, points of Grassmannian, special points of Grassmannian, which are given by index systems. And uh, it's a nice uh, result that uh, any uh, point of Grassmannian is isomorphic to, is a one-to-one -one correspondence between special points uh, and uh, points of Grassmannian. <coughs> and also since I work with uh, smooth functions, so uh, I also need uh, little modification of uh, the definition of uh, Grassmannian such that I replace L2 by smooth functions and then I uh, modify a little definition of projections so the first is the same so it's Fred Holm operator by this, but the second is uh, <coughs> not Hilbert Schmidt but compact operators so this way I receive uh, the dense submanifold of infinite dimension Grassmannian <coughs> now uh, Definition of virtual dimension. So, a virtual dimension um, uh, separates Grassmannian to the disconnected components, and virtual dimension is uh, given by index of Fred Holm operator. So, uh, this uh, so uh, Grassmannian is not connected, so it uh, splits into infinite, uh, infinite number of co uh, connected components. And now, uh, so I also want to define tau function. So the tau function can be defined uh, uh, by um, this uh, uh, in this form. So let me take G from holomorphic functions of the, on the unit disk, non-zero on the boundary such that f of zero is, is equal to one. So I define the product operator given in matrix form here. So where this is zero part of this infinite dimensional matrix, A and D uh, are Fred Holm op operators, and B, which is here, is a Hilbert-Schmidt operator. And uh, this operator acts over, the, my, over the, my function psi, split into also positive and negative part. And uh, uh, so I consider the space of these matrices such uh, that they form so-called uh, uh, restricted GL plus group of auto automorphisms of Grassmannian. And uh, for any G and uh, for any graph in Grassmannian, the tau function is defined as determinant of this operator. And uh, the function G generates so called generalized times, so which are given here. And uh, S are sure polynomials uh, of T. So T bold is a uh, infinite dimensional vector of generalized times and the uh, tau function defines a section in the determinate bundle over this <coughs> infinite dimensional Grassmannian. Well and uh, so I need also becker hieser function psi which can be given by Sato formula but uh, it's uh, difficult to use this formula that's why uh, I will need some, mo uh, some uh, uh, another definition so uh, given uh, graph in Grassmannian, I define uh, gamma plus 
which is a group of uh, uh, automorphisms such that the product of G minus 1 by V uh, is transverse to H minus. So, uh, and then, so to uh, every point in gamma plus there exists a unique function uh, which is also called Becker Ahiezer uh, function. Uh, such that uh, this, uh, uh, this function is uh, from my graph. So this is the definition of Baker here as a function. And uh, so uh, KP hierarchy uh, can be constructed by, with the help of this function. So if I define by, psi, uh, by phi uh, pseudo differential operator, so I can construct a dressing operator. So of course it's a rather standard operation, but I need them. And uh, also M KP, uh, KP flow, the flows commutative or in the lax form of KP. So the idea of uh, what I'm saying is as follows. So if we find a concrete operator T, construct its graph, construct Tor and becker hesse functions and finally coefficient of this becker hesse function, then we obtain uh, explicit solution of KP. So this is exactly what I want to realize. Now, <coughs> let me return back to my generating function that gives uh, conservative quantitative quantities of uh, lerner kofelev dynamics. So uh, I already say that uh, the negative part, uh, well, here is, a, I think, is, uh, well, so here is positive part. Yeah. So uh, both, of course, L minus K, L K, because the function is conserved, are conserved by construction, but only uh, part of the coefficient satisfies V relation with a positive K. But I need uh, to construct the counterpart, the negative part of V uh, uh, generators, such that uh, I have a homomorphism between V algebra and uh, uh, cotangent bundle uh, on the, of the space of univalent functions and graphs in the Grassmannian. So I now construct it. So let me define by H plus the typical representative, the L1, L2, L3, exactly those coefficients for my uh, generating function. Then I construct a neighborhood of H plus. And now I construct the hierarchy of Hilbert-Schmidt operators. In this case, it's very simple, it's finite trunk operators from H plus to H minus, such that the new operators that are constructed with the help of uh, operators uh, that satisfy a weight relation, altogether now they must satisfy the same weight relations. And of course, uh, these coefficients will be conserved, but these coefficients will not. Uh, so uh, for n positive, these coefficients will coincide with L. But for negative, I then I construct them in such a way that all of them now they satisfy V relation. So called positive Verasov generators we already have, and this is our first three negative Verasov generators. Of course, they are constructed much harder for low indices, but once I have two of them, all other can kind of re re recover from the Poisson structure that given in uh, the previous slides. Well, uh, <coughs> so these operators, of course, are Hilbert-Schmidt operators. Uh, so this action gives a graph in Grassmannian of virtual dimension zero because I construct the graph of uh, H plus. And now I want to choose a basis in uh, uh, this graph yeah, in this uh, space V, as a set of Laurent polynomials. So first, I constructed G already. So this, uh, uh, th this G coincide with uh, coefficients of my function L, but then I construct a new negative coefficients which are not from the generating function, but altogether they satisfy with relation. So this is actually what uh, is the result. So this is a basis uh, in, for each point uh, of the neighborhood of my H plus. 
so well, so it doesn't matter, well, rather complicated formulas, but it's a result of this construction. And now main theorem. So first of all, this operator defines a graph, which is spanned by my new basis in the previous slide. And uh, mm, given any psi uh, from H plus, the function G, this function is an element of V. So represent an element from V. So what we get, we get a curve because everything depends on natural time from the Lovner revolution. So we have a countable family of lovner kufarev curves in the Grassmannian. And uh, I didn't, uh, of course, show, uh, but uh, because of complicated formulas, but uh, we explicitly found the baker here as a function along these curves. And uh, so, we, uh, so explicitly, I mean that uh, explicitly we found the coefficients omega. And uh, uh, solution of KP hierarchy is given in terms of coefficients of, of Becker Heiser function. Well, this is a very simple, uh, of course, thing. So, in particular, the simplest case n is equal to 1 is the solution to the classical KP equation, first in the hierarchy. And uh, the most interesting thing is the solutions of KP hierarchy are invariant along the lovner kufrev trajectories in this Grassmannian. So this is basically what we get. So we got low, uh, special curves in Grassmannian on which uh, solutions to KP uh, are the same, of the same form. The same form means that you have the same points of the Grassmannian? No, the points are different, but the solution preserves the form. I don't understand what that means. <coughs> because uh, uh, we Which don't use... The gives um, I mean the form is different. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, we, we have a curve. In the Grassmann? Yeah. Each point of the Grassmann gives a difference. Yeah. But... Uh, so what, what does it mean? Shape. Hmm? Shape. <laughs> what is shape? <laughs> uh, 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 so time, uh, which comes from Lovner Kufarev, uh, does not come to the solution. W w w w th that's what I mean. But then it means that the point is the same. There is uh, no motion on the grass pan. Is there any motion on the grass pan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in this sense, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this means, yes, uh, there is no, no motion. So the lovner Kufarev curves, they don't give motion, yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> what do you mean by Russian? Yeah, here is in Russian. <laughs> yeah. May I ask if I understand directly? So if you have a uh, unit circle yep. that gives you a natural decomposition of the function of the circle into h plus and h minus. Now you have a, a, a simple curve that bounds the simple connected to me. Mm -hmm. Then you may consider splitting of the functions on this curve, which is S1 into a part which extends holomorphically inside the domain and outside. Yep. So you get a, a point of the grass Yeah. So do you understand the correctly? Yes. This is just, and then even a point of the grass mine, we have a standard tau function. Yes, 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 that's true. Then what's the role of proof of No, because I mean that uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, so we start with uh, j just a unit circle. And then we uh, deform it somehow. But well, let's take final, just intermediate. We have a form, so 
any curve defines any the curve point. defines the point in rest minor. That's true. And that gives a solution. Yes, but uh, uh, the uh, the good thing is that this trajectory doesn't go outside from this point. In uh, I mean lobner kufrev trajectory homotopy. No, lobner kufrev just deformed gives you different yes. transformation path in yes. rest minor. And just it's a usual solution. Sure, sure. But just for given curve, we have a standard, in some sense, a standard procedure by SAT. Yes, yes, yes. But it's interesting to understand what kind of come up with the meaning in terms of solution. But uh, uh, each curve can give different point. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it, do it doesn't. This is what the message. <laughs> so let's stop the sticker.